from Rio de Vera, it's the PBA on ESPN. Our five finalists are ready to roll. You won a story of pure title two weeks ago in Medford, Oregon. Good for fourth in the all-time wins list from St. Anne, Missouri, near St. Louis, PDW Pete Weber. From Dayton, Ohio, he's making his third career telecast in search of his first ever title, the 1999 Amateur Bowler of the Year, Brian Fixer. Come on, Reno! Let's go! The 1999 PBA Rookie of the Year, he finished third in all three of his TV appearances last season. From Bedford, Texas, Paul Fleming. From Lockport, New York, Dare Buffalo, last season's Rookie of the Year, sits atop the current PBA World Rankings. Today looking for his first career title, Brad Angelo. Good luck, guys. Good luck, man. Okay. He rolled a 300 game en route for his third career title earlier this season. He wins or locks Connecticut, finishing third in last Sunday's ABC Masters. Here we go from Ann Arbor, Michigan, by way of top fan A. Finden, it's Mika Koibu Nemi. Those are the five finalists here in Reno, going for valuable tour points, big prize money, and for three, except status. Welcome everyone to the National Bowling Stadium, Reno, Nevada. It's the Reno Open, ESPN's coverage of the PBA Tour. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson. Randy, let's check in with the matchups for this show today. You got it, Dave. Our wild card match features Player of the Year candidate Pete Weber and Brian Kretzer making his first TV appearance of the season. Semifinal number one pits Paul Fleming, winless in 90 career events against Brad Angelo, looking for his first career win. Mika Koibuniemi, Major Mika, second in the PBA World Rankings, third last week, waits for the wild card winner in semi number two. We are ready to go. Pete Weber, PDW, and Brian Kritzer, wild card match. Rematch of last night's round of eight here in Reno. That was a very exciting finish. Went seven. And an emotional moment. Needing a strike late. Brian Kritzer got it. Let out a big whoop after that. So we get underway with a strike from PW. That's just like in practice right there, baby. Just like in practice That's and right. just like what I saw in qualifying, I actually got paired with PDW cool. and he did a lot of that. First game he started, the tournament was 279. Third year on tour from the native of Dayton, Ohio, seeking his first ever championship. First time we've seen him on TV since the World Championship last year. Wrapping up last season in Taylor, Michigan. Four pin stands for Brian Kretzer. He lost that championship match to Walter Ray Williams Jr. Earning most of his earnings from last season just in that one day. Tremendous tournament for him last year. One of the few, or the only qualifier I should say that actually pulled just about every game of qualifying to get to that point. Takes care of the four pin, single pin conversion. Leading us to our major real deal matchup, Randy. Real even all the way across the board. Anyway, you look at it. spare conversion, strike percentage, average almost identical. Brian Kretzer was down three games to two. He trailed two to three last night. Came back, won the last two games, showing the last six or seven in a row in game seven to clinch the spot on television today, Dave. First ever TV appearance, head to head with Pete Weber for Brian Kretzer. He plays the lane perfectly. The ball scoots right into the pocket for a nice strike. The speed pattern favors Brian Kretzer because he likes to throw it slow and he likes to hook it. Ball speed, or lack thereof, I should say, was a must this week. You had to keep your speed nice and soft. It was a big advantage. Got to like that for Pete Weber. That's it. Well, round of eight loss last night for Pete Weber. 
11 and 5 match play record, 225.35 average, and also took care, unfortunately, for our own Joe Ciccone. PBA bowlers like Randy sure Del Ballard, Tim Briss on our ESPN crew, in addition to competing every week. Please hook, Randy. His hopes were answered quite well, I think. We'll talk about it when we get to the lane animation. Why he's saying this. If you get the ball too far to the right, there's a lot of oil to the outside part of the lane. Another half an inch or so further right, that ball doesn't get to the head pin. Turkey start for Pete Weber. Going off that Medford win a couple of weeks back. He told us even prior to that. The show earlier this year in Albany. He wasn't worried a bit about the point rankings because he was doing so well. Yes. Now he's clinched his status. The question is, can someone like Brian Kretzer get there also as he tries to climb that points list and make the all jet tour next year? Brian Kretzer gets it into the swish zone. That slow ball speed, nice rev rate, and big back end gets those off hits to strike. Brian Kretzer told me last night, Dave, he bowled so bad the first half he couldn't bowl any worse. And to just be out of the point, out of the top 50 in the point list was bonus. He says he's got nowhere to go but up from here. Oh! Four pin for Kretzer, who wanted that one pretty badly. He said, plain and simple, I was not bowling well. And in the Christmas break after Windsor Locks event it was not in the TOC. Had some time to recharge the battery a bit. He spent a lot of time with his two children and just worked on his techniques. A lot of practice time. There we see World Championship, the march of that round of Super 16. Brad Angelo is the leader right now. Mika Koivinemi not far behind him with another great week at the ABC Masters here. Pete Weber fourth overall so for good reason he's not concerned about the points on the line in this event today 25,000 to the winner Brad Angelo at the top of the list he's made match play in every event but two uh oh uh oh nine goes down very late and that's huge too because you don't want to be shooting a four nine when you're already ahead in the match that ball breaks real sharp down the lane one way to combat that for Pete is to just throw it a little bit harder. Ten pin lead for Pete Weber. Takes care of the four pin for his mark. A couple of weeks ago in Medford, you see that deep inside line that Petey was playing on this pattern B. This week, a little bit straighter, but the lanes haven't broken down yet. Remember, we still have three matches to go. But keep in mind, the ball that Pete Weber is using now was the same ball that he used on the right lane in the championship match that he was going really straight and direct with. Trying to improve on his TV numbers here today, Randy, and that's a good way to do it. Strikes it for the five first frames for PDW. Well, he's come out of it. Ten pin lead for Pete. Simple as that. Brian Kretzer spending time with his daughter Megan, who's 17, son Mason, who is seven. Over that Christmas break time, just looked at his game and said, what have I got to do? Drastic changes were necessary. But he put it on himself, as he told us last night, it was my fault, no one else's. Third step goes way left, that gets his body out of the way, his swing line follows it, and that's what helps him project the ball to the right. His hand in rotation gets the ball to return back. But you're right, Dave, I mean, he went home and literally practiced on a real easy condition to loosen his swing up. He felt like he was bowling in a phone booth. He had felt like he had no room for air left or right and couldn't get the ball off his hand. Practicing on an easy lane condition will free your swing up. Four shots just like that. A double in the fifth and sixth. Everything all even between Pete Weber and Brian Kretzer. It's a wild card match from Reno. ESPN's exclusive coverage of the PBA Reno Open is brought to you by GEICO. A 15-minute phone call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By new Odoriders Plus, the only art-supporting insole that protects against odor and wetness. 
and by Miller High Life to live simply, proudly, boldly, manly. This is the High Life. Hard to find a more beautiful area. Reno, Nevada with Lake Tahoe just about 45 minutes away. Best skiing around, that's for sure. And the Reno Open, PBA Tour coverage on ESPN. Welcome back to Nevada, Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson. Randy, the significance of this event for the PBA Player of the Year race, what can happen today? Well, a lot can happen for two players, Mika Koivuniemi and Pete Weber. Two guys that are looking to catapult themselves to the top of the Player of the Year race. Mika finished third last week in this center at the ABC Masters. Completely different pattern this week, though. Pete Weber, a couple of weeks ago in Medford, actually won on pattern B, this very same pattern. And let me show you why Pete is so good on this pattern. Out of bounds on both sides on pattern B, roll slick, a lot of oil. That's why Pete Weber loves this, because he can play in. His axis rotation and ball speed make this matchup perfectly for him. Mika Koivuniemi, on the other hand, will be taking the straight and direct route. And don't forget, the PBA Tour's official website, www.pba.com, is your best source for all the latest PBA news, tournament results, and stats. And if you live in the L.A. area, you can go to pba.com to order tickets for next Sunday's U.S. Open Finals, live from the Anaheim Convention Center. So click on the pba.com today. Pete Weber as the wild card match, Randy, continues here in Reno. Strike for PDW in the fifth. A 10 pin lead. Chance for a 20 pin advantage with a turkey ball here. Five out of six frames. Perfect for Pete so far. Lane level look at it. Wow. Bust off 10 pins down in the pit once again. Mentioned the exempt tour for next year. A 64 man field is coming your way, folks, in PBA tour action. 50 players from the points list and winners, eight from tour trials, a minimum of four from weekly tour qualifiers. So there are chances for those who do not win this year or in the top players and points to still make it next year. Yeah, it, it's not, it's not uh, the end of the world, but it's going to be very difficult to get there if you don't make the top 50. For a guy like Brian Kretzer, this is a critical event. Without question, as he tries to make his run up the list, he's 52nd coming into today's action. Who's in so far? Patrick Hewlett Jr., a two-year exemption after winning the TOC. Same goes for Walter Ray Williams Jr., won here last week at the ABC Masters. The rest have the single-year exemption, including at the very bottom, PDW himself. And it seems like it was only about a month ago when Walter Ray was like 32nd on the point list. All of a sudden, now he's 8th. But he doesn't have to worry about that either because he won the Masters in a two-year exemption last week. Kretzer. Look out. Hey! Hey! And down she goes late. Right. That bird dog will hunt. And a huge break, too, because that keeps the string alive and keeps Pete Weber on his toes. Watch this. Head pin going to the sidewall. Look out. Timber. Oh. You think Brian Kretzer likes that one? Four bagger for Kretzer, maybe the same for Pete. Looking for late help on the four, but won't get it there. Pete Weber trying to get that ball to push just a little bit longer down the lane before it takes. Watch this. Look at this hand right there. Look at that. The Pete Weber trademark, that open hand. One other player that does that that comes to mind, Tommy Dilutes. But this ball cuts in a little too sharply. Only leaving the four pin. Takes care of the mark. Tommy DeLutz had that great run in Medford, but speaking of those two, Pete won on the bench with uh, late troubles that Tommy had that day a couple weeks back in Oregon. Late troubles in the form of a big time ring in 10 pin. Mm. Tommy DeLutz needed all three in the 10th frame. Got the first one, second shot was a ring in 10. Pete Weber down by one, needs to strike here in the ninth. Big shot, Pete Weber gets 10 down in the pit. And of course, his wife Tracy very pleased with that shot. Good, uh, much better. So right. Pete Excuse last night, Randy, about how competitive he still is at this stage of his career. He said, "I'm competitive. Everything, even playing cards with Tracy, the room, <laughs> Gin Rummy. I want to win every time." Keeps the fires burning. Thirty career titles and counting for Pete Weber. 
Pete Weber, Max score 258, Ryan Kretzer 269. Big strike, foundation frame for Kretzer. Come on, Kretzer. Okay, a strike in the 10th frame and nine, we have a possibility of a tie. Two strikes in the 10th frame, Brian Kretzer will win this match. Talked to Del Ballard, our statistician, earlier today, and we talked about Brian Kretzer, whether or not he was rusty mentally. It's been a long time since he's been in this situation, and he hasn't bowled well all year long. Big moment, friends. Jill and Madison back home watching along with the entire fifth grade class from Greenmont Elementary. They've been following Brian very closely in Ohio. Oh. And must love oh. seeing that big oh. shot. Thank you for it, Captain. Big, big, big time shot. But this is the telling shot right here to see where Brian Kretzer is mentally. This ball absolutely perfect. Again, if he goes nine spare, he can't lose. A strike, he'll move on. Brian Kretzer takes a re-rack here, wants to think about this shot a little more. Gives us time to tell you about the upcoming 61st U.S. Open. Notice the start time, folks. 12.30 Eastern on ESPN, 9.30 here on the West Coast. Presented by Jackson Hewitt Tax Service, third of four majors on ESPN. It's a two-hour show, as was the ABC Masters last Sunday at this very stadium. Ten Look out, here it comes. Oh, no, 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 no. Doesn't count. It doesn't count. The machine caught the top of the pin. I don't know either. At least that's the way it looked from here. Quick. We're going to have to get a ruling on this. It looked like the machine caught the top of the pin. Take a look. Ten pin all the way to the right. Can't see on there. Hard to tell. Waiting for a ruling. Tournament director Kirk Von Kruger will determine the machine did hit the ten pin. There's our tournament director, Kirk Von Kruber, making the decision. They couldn't see it. So the 10 pin is respotted, and he'll have a chance for a spare. Huge moment of the match. Yeah, huge. But you know what? It, Brian Kretzer needs to regroup and, and make this spare, plain and simple, because he will force Pete Weber to throw three in the 10th just to tie. Takes care of it nicely. Oh, time. Yeah. Pete Weber on the right lane, Dave Ryan, has left a four pin oh, twice. If he leaves a Scores four right. pin anywhere in the 10th frame, he's going to lose. It would only be Brian Kretzer's second career TV win. He needs to make this eight of 10 and then keep going. A strike or bust for PDW. Four pin. And that's it. Brian Kretzer wins the wild card match. Four pin, four pin, four pin, all on the right lane. Pete was perfect on the left lane, and that was his undoing in this match. This shot looks pretty good. It, it does the same exact thing. It just cuts too sharply down the lane and goes just a pinch high. So this match has been wrapped up by Brian Kretzer. In his career, he's now 2-2 two two on TV, trying to make the finals again as he did at the World Championship at Taylor, Michigan last year. He lost to Walter Ray Williams Jr. in the final then. Meet got Corbin Emmy is next for Kretzer, trying to get exempt status. Top bowlers of the PBA Tour beginning play here today. 33 total titles. 30 of those just went away, though. As Pete Weber was defeated by Brian Kretz in the wild card match. Now it's semifinal number one. Brad Angelo, last year's Rookie of the Year, and Paul Fleming from near Dallas, making his first TV appearance of this season. What an interesting year it's been for him. Trying to turn it around. Use of a sports psychologist. And looking there for the scout across the deck. Won't get the help on number 10. This is a real fast messenger, and it goes right in front. We saw a lot of that happen at the bowling stadium in the last couple of weeks. Thanks, 
Here the 10 pin and a mark for Paul Fleming. Now as to Brad Angelo, who's had a great year on tour in terms of the points. Match play, as you mentioned, so consistent. Last year's Rookie of the Year, though. Still bidding for his first ever title. He's 34. Very good amateur career for Brad Angelo from Western New York near Buffalo. In addition to his first victory on tour, looking for his first TV win. Very deliberate. And a good start for Brad Angelo. Which leads us, Randy, to the Baby Ruth Real Deal matchup. Thank you, Dave. Look at this average here, about nine, eight or nine pins a game higher. Strike percentage, what that means is basically he throws, or this week he threw about seven strikes for every ten frames. Brad Angelo out averaged the entire field. And by round, I mean, this is sick. 262. The round is 16. He went 4 0, 4 0 in his first two rounds. The only guy to win a couple of games from Brad Angelo, our very own Dale Ballard Jr. On lane nine, more magic for Brad Angelo. Off to a very good start. Brad Angelo, five step or four steps with a stutter step, that's just a timing step. But Del Ballard and I talked about this before the show today about Brad Angelo and when his ball hits the pocket. And we both agree nobody strikes like Brad Angelo when he gets it going on our tour. Back to Paul Fleming, and he's got 10 down in the pit as well. Paul Fleming also a fairly easy road to the telecast. Only losing three games and shutting out Peter Hernandez in the round of eight. 12 and three match play record, 227, 1 5 average for Fleming en route to the TV show today. He met and started working with a sports psychologist here in Reno. Come on, Trying to get his thought process in order. And as he mentioned to us last night, Randy feels like it's in a much better mode right now. Working with Dean Hinnitz, who. who Works with several players out here, including Chris Barnes, Lonnie Wallachek, and basically got Paul to just try to stay out of his own way. He has a tendency to overthink it. And this week, he got Paul to have only one thought at a time before each and every shot. That's real important. I mean, you can you start getting all these thoughts going on. It's hard to get from point A to point B and let go of it the same way twice. And that thought, as we'll explain, continuous feats. We'll break that down when Paul resumes action in the semifinal. What a deliberate oh, approach and delivery never. for Angelo. But it all pays off for the Western New Yorker. And speaking of an easy road, <laughs> there's that what we talked about. Our guy, Del Ballard, was fortunate enough to take Brad to six games and really challenge him. But aside from that, he had a pretty easy uh, cakewalk to get to this point. When you average 250, 260 in match play, you're going to be really hard to beat. Two match play losses for Brad. That's it. Watch this hand at the bottom of the swing. Ten pin lead. Ten more. Four bagger to start for Brad Angelo and a 20 pin advantage. When a player has the kind of success on the tour that Brad Angelo has had, other players watch real close and try to figure out what he's doing. And guess what? We can't figure it out. <laughs> Something about his ball roll and the way it enters the pocket creates unbelievable pin carry for Brett Angelo. Mm, that was good pin action we saw from our crew there. Fleming down goes to seven late. And he is in a 10 pin hole head to head with Angelo. And no big surprise that Paul Fleming is on the show. He was a former player of the year as, or excuse me, rookie of the year, as was Brad Angelo. This year, the rookie of the year race being controlled handily by Chris Johnson. Seen him on two shows. Toledo, Long Island. He almost took his first ever title in his TV okay, debut, but Steve yeah, Jones won on the bench that Come on. day. On this day, Fleming is staying hot. Evens things up for Bagger. I think Paul got away with one here. Looked like he got it in just a pinch. He said, hold, and it does. 
And he's doing exactly what he needs to do to Brad Angelo. Keep striking. Third TV show of the year for Angelo in Omaha. Saw him again in Medford, and now here he is on the same yeah. pattern. In Reno at the PBA Reno Open, he stays red hot. He told us before the broadcast right. today he was just hoping to make one show in each half of the season. He's already been able to exceed that. Well, as, as good as Brad Angelo's bowling, I think his expectations or his goals are a little low. But the one thing I really like about Brad Angelo is you watch that follow through, it goes straight at the target. Hand, elbow, follow through, going straight in the direction he wants to throw it. What a start. Front five for Brad Angelo. Ten pin lead. Fleming does have a four bagger, so he's just down by ten pins right now. Six bagger, front six for Angelo. Does he have it? Yeah. Some late help. Yes, he does. Has the only career game on TV this year. Connecticut, maybe Brad Angelo's turn next. We'll find out. In this very building last Sunday, Walter Williams Jr. won the ABC Masters in exciting fashion. Now it's the PBA Reno Open, and so far, Randy, in this semifinal, things very tight. A breakdown through six. Only one spare. Ten strikes, one spare. Paul Fleming has to keep striking. Walter Ray won his sixth major here last Sunday. Paul push, Fleming push, just takes push. one title. Come on, hit it. Look out. Hit it. Wanted some late help on the nine. Didn't get it. Well, unfortunately, I know it's only the sixth frame, but this might be the end for Paul Fleming. 4-9 on a four-bagger. Brad Angelo doesn't look like he's going to miss any time within the next month. You see the split numbers. Trying to raise the percentage here. Come on! Come Trying on, to kick it kick over me. until the nine cannot get it done. Paul Fleming in our Dexter approach has been working with Mark Baker on doing one thing real important. That's keeping his push away nice and level. This is what I think makes him so great. 35 years of age. Look at the knee bend. Try doing that 80 or 90 times at home for a week. That creates this unbelievable ball rotation down the lane. And right now, Paul needs to get that same rotation working and strike out to have any chance, in my opinion, in this match. It's got to happen now for Paul Fleming. All right. I'm going anywhere. See the opening. Right. Seventh frame here. Looking for the front seven. And what an opportunity for Brad Angelo. Lots of money on the line. As Michelle, his wife, watches closely. Cambridge Credit Counseling sponsoring a bonus of $10,000 for the first player on TV to start a match with nine in a row. Make it seven straight. Now, if that player goes on to roll a 300 game, the bonus will be doubled to more than a total of 20,000. The bonus will be available each week the rest of the season, thanks to our friends from Cambridge Credit Counseling. Brad Angelo taking a re rack, front seven. Gather himself. I like this. I think this is a good move. Del Ballard's nodding his head. He thinks it's a good move. Oh. Gather yourself. Make a good shot here. A lot of money on the line. Cambridge Credit Counseling with their bonus, the PBA's bonus, if there's a 300, this one game could be worth $30,000. Not to mention the fact that if he wins, he's going to the title match for the first time in his career. His first ever TV win, so tremendous amount at stake here. The former PBA Rookie of the Year. Is he ever focused? Ten pin stays up. Wow. But just as we talked about how great his carry was, this ball here, you can't throw it any better, and he leaves a big-time ring in 10. But that's right, he's got the match in hand. All he has to do is mark out. He's going to be in. Oh, excuse me. I shouldn't say that. He needs a mark here to keep himself at a 259 pace. All right. 
Ten pin for Angelo takes care of that. Tonight, Chris Berman, Tom Jackson have all the highlight stories, player and coach interviews, and more from the Super Bowl. Live from the Super Bowl in Houston on NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite, 10.30 Eastern Time. We're immediately following the game. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Paul Fleming has a possible 256. He needs them all. Get there, Bob. 43 pins. He's down. Make it 33 with a double seventh and eighth frame for Fleming. Stranger things have happened on this tour this season. Reverting back to Lonnie Wallachek's struggles last uh, couple of weeks. Paul Fleming with a strike here. Three in the tenth. Shoots 256. Brad Angelo. Strike, spare, strike, he would win. So the breakdown, Paul Fleming, TV pair. Got to keep the streak going come here. On, come on, come on. Foundation frame. What time? the big strike. What time? Well, right when he lets go of this, you can see him just kind of grit his teeth. And this ball is threaded perfectly. Think he wanted that one? You betcha. An unusual week for Paul Fleming, too. Almost had to withdraw because of a neck injury. Stiff neck he had in qualifying. Got it out, made it through. Now he's head to head with Angelo here on TV. <laughs> close the door here. All right, well, you heard him. Looking to close the door with a strike here. That'll be the end of Paul Fleming. Michelle doesn't look nervous at all. <laughs> Their kids, Dylan, almost three years old. <sighs> Brielle, who is eight months, spending a lot of time with Brad on tour. Separate hotel rooms, though, to make sure Brad gets his rest. And <laughs> yeah, you've got to be 100%, especially this year with so much on the line on the PBA Tour. That's it. Roll, baby. Wow. Right. Four pin. You heard him yell, roll, baby. I'm surprised that ball didn't roll up flush. That ball scooted down the lane just a pinch. This could have been a pocket split real easy. Right there, it makes its turn. We've seen real unusual splits at the Bowling Stadium in Reno over the past two weeks. Right now, he needs a spare and eight right. pins, and he's a winner. Now, let's go here. That's the spare part One of it. One more shot. Eight pins your job here. All right. A big goal about to be realized for Brad Angelo. First ever PBA TV TV win. He knows what he needs. The winner. Seven pin up, won't matter, a victory for Brad Angelo, his wife Michelle, very pleased to see that. First time in his PBA career, he wins on TV. So he's off now right. to the finals. Gretzer, Koibu, Nemi in the other semifinal. Let's see who takes on last year's Rookie of the Year, Michelle's husband, Brad Angelo. ESPN's exclusive coverage of the PBA Reno Open is brought to you by Cambridge Credit Counseling. Log on to NoDebt.com and find out how good it feels to be debt-free. By Bear Aspirin, take it for pain, take it for life. And by Dexter, bowling, golf, and casual, we have the right shoe for you. What a sight, the annual balloon festival here in Reno, Nevada takes place each September. Right, Angelo? At the front seven, that means he's in the final as he takes care of Paul Fleming, 258-235. Weber falling to Kretzer in the wild card match. The top 50 finishers in the points race will qualify for next season's exempt tour. A quick look shows Parker Bone the third outside the cut line. He's historically been successful in Reno, as we see in this week's Miller Milestone. The success that I've had throughout the years in Reno really can they can't really be surpassed by almost anywhere that I've gone and bowled in the past. Obviously bowling a 300 game, the doubles with Ron Morton, which caps it all off with the, the ABC Masters Championship. Whenever you bowl a doubles format, you always feel that 
year, there's a little bit more pressure on yourself to go out there and try to perform. One year at the stadium, Ron Morton and I got paired up, and it actually worked out to be a great team. Ron was excited for the fact that here we are in contention to win the whole tournament, but more so the fact that hopefully for him it was going to be his first PBA title. Well, man, he got up in the ninth frame and he threw a shot that was out absolutely near the gutter. I don't know how it didn't fall in and it come back and they all fell over and I was like, we can't lose at this point. <laughs> the man is golden. The 300 definitely stands atop the leaderboard in my book. The fact that it was against two amateurs, it was kind of like, well, boys, welcome to the PBA Tour. This is the real deal. These guys are, are here for keeps. Chris Sand threw the first four in a row and, and left the ring in seven, and I believe he threw three more after that. So the fact that I had eight in a row sitting on the bench and I look up at the scoreboard, by no means have I won the match. I'm just in control of it. Once I threw the ninth one, I knew then I had won the match. The 12th frame, I was so pumped up. I threw the ball, I feel like 100 miles an hour. It was firm, it was online, and most of the times they will all fall. The ABC Masters, I defeated my good friend Jason Couch. I take every tournament for its own merit. I, I just want to win whatever event it is, but that little quote unquote major status for some reason does hang over everyone's head. And when I was fortunate to win at that time, I just gave a flick of the monkey and said, well, that guy's off my back and he won't be back again. Reno has just been a, an unbelievable place for me. Parker Bone III also won a doubles title with Alita Seal, a non-televised event here in Reno as well. Semi-final match coming your way. Kretzer, Kodronemi, Mika has three titles. Kretzer still in search of number one in his career. Second semi-final of the day here in Reno, Nevada. At the National Board Stadium. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, our entire PBA ESPN crew. Kodronemi and Kretzer. BK, as they call him, Brian Kretzer already defeating Pete Weber in the wild card for his first TV win of this season in his first TV appearance. So the nerves may be gone now. He's got to take on Major Mika. Oh, the boys, the 7-10 oh. split. Just number 10 remains. Wow. Well, the head pin gets slapped silly, doesn't know which direction to go in. And thankfully, the 7 pin falls. Only leaving Brian with the 10 pin. One thing's for sure in this match, as you see, Brian converts no problem. Mika will not be throwing the big, slow loop de doop from inside. He is going to be firm and straight up the back with Loft playing a lot closer to where Pete Weber was playing the lanes, similar to where Paul Fleming was playing the lanes. And Mika told me last night. If they're going to beat him, they're going to beat him at what he does best. With a loft and right at him. Yikes, what a start. Look at that split as he goes right through the nose. This is called grandma's teeth or Greek church, whichever you like. The rule of thumb is you get the ball over into the six pin here. The six will hit off the nine and somehow get over here, have the seven come off the wall, and uh, you know what? Good luck. <laughs> Pretty difficult conversion. Oh. Everything but the four. Major Mika and Brian Kretzer, pretty close in average here. Look at how tight this matchup is. Fair conversion percentage identical. Major Mika told me he grinded through match play just to get here. He doesn't like pattern B, but in the last two weeks, factor practice into here, Mika's bowled over 100 games, including the ABC Masters back-to-back -back telecast, two different conditions. Fifth show of the year for Major Mika. Ooh, help! <laughs> Plenty of help. Times two with a 10 pin. I don't know what came out of the back, but something did. Comes this big loft. This helps Mika to go straight. Something came out from the back. It can't see Mika doesn't even know what happened there. He's still trying to figure it out, I think, Randy. <laughs> so am I. Where did that pin come from? Right. Help on the 10. 11 pin early lead here for Kretschmer. Strike. 
Slow boat to payday right there. This beautiful slow roll, gets his hand underneath it, rotates around like a quarter of a turn, and that ball grabs the lane, travels in direction rotation, that equals the big back end. Right now, Mika's bowling Brian Kretzer on Brian Kretzer's A pattern, which means that Mika, from here on out, has to be perfect, in my opinion. He got the open frame in the first frame. That's the place to do it. If you're going to do it, from here on out, Mika has to bowl a perfect game to win. Yes! A big shot for Kretzer. One and two in his TV career coming in on television. He's back to 500 now with a victory over PDW. Lost to Walter Ray Williams Jr., 226-205 in the finals of the World Championship in Taylor, Michigan last year. On TV, Mika has been absolutely crushing the field. Windsor locks Connecticut, a tour victory. Good shots like that. Big tall man, six foot five, long arms. Look at the high backswing, the high launch angle, meaning the distance off the floor that he lets go of it. And a great result. Great match against Brian Alpert. The first, first game of that match, Mika shoots 289. Brian Alpert gets up and goes bang, bang, bang to shoot 290 to win by one pin. Wow. He took that out of 32 wins, seven games, 12 to six match play record. Mika looked a little bit high there. However, just the four stands. Another pulled shot, it looks like. Nine and a wiggle. And this is one of the few times that I've seen Mika look uncomfortable on television. Put the bottom behind it. Goes to the plastic ball. Even though Mika can throw his regular ball real straight and real hard, this one's not going to hook at all. Straight line. Takes care of the spare. Gretzer made the World Championship final last year. Mika has won the U.S. Open. Just coming up on ESPN. Next week, L.A., Anaheim, to be specific. Arena finals. Right now, Kretzer is locked in to this tour event. Wow. Ten pin. I cannot throw a bowling ball any worse than that. God, that's freaking old. Well, you know, when you throw it that bad and it goes ring and ten, you're, you're probably okay. When I throw it bad, it, it gets six. Brian Kretzer threw this one bad. It's just a ring and ten, and that's all right, as long as he converts. Takes care of the ten pin. Next week, the PBA Tour rolls on to Fountain Valley, California, as we talked about. 61st U.S. Open presented by Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. The action starts at 12.30 Eastern Time here on ESPN. Note the different start time, folks. 9.30 on the West Coast. U.S. Open has never been won by that great Carmen Salvino, and he will be participating in next week's U.S. Open, along with Parker Bone III, who hasn't won a U.S. Open either. If there's any question, Randy, that Carmen does not have the strength the grip that he did when he was a great player forget about it. he shook my hand the other day and almost fractured all my <laughs> bones of the head very uh, strong man he really is it'll be fun to watch him compete at the u.s open and i won a doubles tournament with carmen salvino in 1988. four pin gretzer displeased once again he looks frustrated with himself and right now he needs to shake that off and clear his mind because I think he's got Mika on the ropes. I don't think Mika likes his ball reaction very much. Close last night, he wants to remain calm in a tough That's spot on TV. Man. Very critical not to be overwhelmed as Brad Angelo had been earlier this season in Omaha and maybe in Medford too. But a pretty tough opponent in Medford did Angelo and Tommy DeLutz Jr. But Kretzer appears calmer here. Fifth frame down 10. Oh. Down goes number 10 late. Nice little left tap on the 10. 
But right now, I think Brian Kretzer, by not striking in the fourth and fifth frame, has given Mika breathing room. As you see the six, give the 10 a little nudge. Mika is only down by eight pins and can actually take the lead by one with a strike right here. I'm sorry, this match is all even with a strike here. That's right, down 10. We got the open to begin the match, remember that? Oh and my God. late help again. He's had a couple of big breaks in this match, without question. Semi-final number two resumes when we return to Reno. Mika Kodunemi, Major Mika from Finland, head-to-head -head with Brian Kretzer of Dayton, Ohio. Second semi-final, Brad Angelo is already through. Who will take him on? That's the question we intend to answer here over the next several frames. Pressure building. Player like Kretzer who needs a good performance this week to get himself exempt next year. Ten pin. Ball comes in late, ball hits flat. Brian not happy. Just does not look comfortable right now. Doesn't look like he's getting it off his hand the way he wants. And the pin carry is reflecting that. Kretzer down by one pin now after the mark. Sixth frame. Mika works on a double. Next time he's up. There he is, Dell Ballard Jr. Great week for you, Dell. Congratulations. Brian Voss seemed like only three weeks ago he's in 72nd. Now he's in the 30s. Mm. Bob Learn Jr., Mr. 300. Joe Ciccone, our own Joe Ciccone. And Tim Chris the Turtle. Gotta get those guys on TV. You work for us, you do well, right? Right, Rhino? There's Chris Johnson. Looks like the runaway rookie of the year candidate. 21st this week. One pin lead for Mika. 11 pin advantage with a strike here. Blisters the rack. That ball was cooking right into the pocket. Big time shot right there. We've grown accustomed to seeing this. This is the Masters last week. You see that right around the 13th board to the 8th board. This this week, completely different oil pattern about the 11th board to the 9th board. Mika playing to his strength, refuses to give in, and somehow gets it done on a pattern you're supposed to play in on. Third place finish, we saw that at the Masters. One by Walter Ray Williams Jr. and Chris Barnes. Ten more down in the pitch, 60 feet. The success for Mika Kordunemi once again. For Bagger. Mika Kordunemi just got comfortable and just put a whole lot of trouble right on top of Brian Kretzer. Brian Kretzer can strike out for 247. Mika Kordunemi. 258. Big shot. Wow. Talk about high and unsatisfactory pin reaction for Kretzer there. Didn't right. sound good at all, did it? Right through the heart. Looked soft. That flat 10 may have had something to do with it. Has to get the ball over here. Throw the three pin into the four seven. And cannot take care of the mark, so the four seven remains up for Kretzer. The US Open is the tournament that everybody wants to win, but because of the significance of the PBA World Championships, season ending PBA World Championships, that's the tournament you want to win. Five year exemption. We move on to Tucson right after that big tournament, US Open. And, of course, the tournament I was just mentioning, five-year exemption, all that money, and the title of world champ. Four days in on the road, Randy. 
Be sure to log on, folks. PBA.com. Great tickets available for the arena finals. Southern California for the U.S. Open next week and in Ypsilanti at the Eastern Michigan University campus. Brian Kretzer thoroughly disgusted with himself, and he should be. He gave Mika the opening. Mika stepped right through that door and has a chance to lock this match up. Foundation frame looks for a five bagger, oh. chance for a 45 pin lead. Wow. Nine pin. He is really throwing the ball hard. Okay, a spare here and a mark in the 10th frame with good count. Mika's going to be in the 220s. The best Brian Kretzer can shoot is 213. Nine pins. Shout out Kretzer. There's the mark on the nine pin. Nine pins on this ball, Mika is going to bowl Brad Angelo for the title. But let me just say this, 220 or 230 is not going to beat Brad Angelo in my opinion. Not the way he's been bowling, right? Too good a look, the first match. He sizzled through the opener. Semi-final match win for him. Mika trying to put it away. He is the winner in this semifinal. It's over. Mika Kordanemi will take on Brad Angelo. First ever head to head between the two right handers on TV. Major Mika, look at the backswing. And the loft on the delivery at the approach. A winner in Reno today. So we are set for the final. Brad Angelo, Mika Kordanemi head to head for the first time ever on TV. Setting up our Geico Direct Championship recap, Randy. Earlier in the wild card match, it was Brian Kretzer defeating Pete Weber by the score of 258 to 235. Weber needs all three in the tenth and leaves a four pin. Then in semifinal number one, it was Brad Angelo defeating Paul Fleming by the score of 258 to 235 again. Brad Angelo's big strong start with the front seven too much for Paul Fleming. And as you just saw in semifinal number two, Major Mika Koi Buniemi defeating Brian Kretzer. 236, 213. Brian really opened the door in the eighth frame. The quest for the first ever PBA title, maybe player of the year honors, continues for Angelo. The world famous National Bowling Stadium, Reno, Nevada. Side of some of the most historic tournaments in bowling history. Including this one, the Reno Open. Yeah, PBA Tour continue on ESPN. Champion gets $40,000, runner up $20,000, but the points, perhaps even more valuable at this point, we're trying to get to exempt status for next year, $25,000 to the winner. Well, Brett Angelo and Mika Koivu Niemi are going to bowl this title match. They have plenty of points. In fact, I could borrow points from them, but it really helped out Paul Fleming and Brian Kretzer. Final is underway from Reno. Great shot. What a start for Mika. Wow. Player of the year race, very tight. You see Mika with five telecasts in one title. Pat Healy Jr., Walter Ray Williams Jr., both with one major each and two titles. Keep in mind, Mika also has a perfect 300 game on television. Mm. Five shows, he told us last night, greatly exceeding his expectations for the year. Career best. Brad Angelo could be first in the points with a win and exempt for next year and perhaps right up top among the favorites to win player of the year honors. He and using with points. Excuse me, Dave, and using different bowling balls in each lane. Again, this is a big deal right here. 11 pins a game higher than average equals a lot more strikes being thrown per game. Mika has to bowl a perfect game the way I see it. Brad Angelo. Interesting, two different balls. He's never been this far. Never been to a TV final. Oh, yikes. Four in the nine. He made up for Angelo, tough split. Well, really hooked down the lane, and it looked like Brad stood up a little bit on this shot at the foul line. Real deliberate. 
Nice timing step, and it looked like he just came, well, no, it actually looks like he threw that one pretty good. It just overhooked down the lane. Oh, he almost did. The nine Got. stays up. Open frame early. We'll see how detrimental that is to Brad Angelo's quest for a first ever title. Came real close. Got to get the ball to the left side of the four pin. Slide it over into the nine. Pretty close there. But a disastrous open frame. Can't give Mika Koivuniemi any breathing room, especially with the line he's playing. Real sensitive directional line straight down and in. I understand that, but there's more room if you can get in and throw it soft and open the lane up. 22 pin oh, oh, oh. lead strike there. Nine pin for Mika. He seems to be throwing the ball, Randy, harder than any time I can remember seeing him on TV. He's just cranking it out there today. Well, he's throwing it really, really hard to keep it on line. And if, if you look at the last shot he threw on that right lane, he's solid nine. Trying to up the numbers, career TV final appearances. He'll do it with shots like that. Takes care of the nine pin. Tonight, Chris Berman, Tom Jackson have all the highlight stories, player and coach interviews, and more from Houston and the Super Bowl on NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite, 10 30 Eastern Time, or immediately following the game. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Third frame, Mika Koivunemi, a 12-pin advantage. Takes his time. A lot of concentration for the big fin. 10-pin. That's what happens when you're throwing it that hard and you get just a pinch light in the pocket. There's not enough drive to carry that weak 10. Mika's a pretty good spare shooter. And you have to be, especially in single pin spares. Down goes number 10 in that instance. Mika's won titles in 10 countries, Finland, America, China, Thailand, Malaysia, Holland, Denmark, among others. Angelo, a great amateur career. 34 years old from Lockport, New York, near Buffalo. He wants to turn it on on the pro level. Can he do it? Is the question. Big strike. Fight back. He can't throw much better than this. Out to about the eighth board. That ball just peels back and goes dead flush. Again, Brad Angelo should be making those kind of shots. This is his A game, his bread and butter, getting in, playing the inside part of the lane with a nice, soft, controlled speed. Fourth frame, Brad Angelo. Unbelievable. Wow. Unbelievable that his ball didn't pick up and hook into the pocket, leaving a 2A10. Watch this ball just never hook down the lane. Takes care of the 2A, the double right. wood, but the 10 is up. So another open frame. Had one of the second, has another one in the fourth. We'll see if Mika takes advantage. 34 events without a tour victory for Brad Angelo, who sits now to watch Mika Corbunemi. Special thanks to Phil Salerno, chairman of the board for the RSCVA. And his staff, great job hosting everyone. Reno Sparks Convention and Visitors Authority. And we appreciate all the great hospitality. Mika's up 23 pins. Oh, just the boys, the 7-10 again. Pins flying everywhere, but no strikes. And right now, Mika has a chance to really put some heat on Brad Angelo. As you see, they had been looking for something to hit. Only leaving the 10 pin. The spare conversion here, he will be up by 22 pins, but he needs to start striking to put heat on Brad. Converts to 10 pin. Setting us up for the Uniroyal Tire Rock and Roll, Randy. 
the ghost of Mika lives on this shot as he's rocking and rolling with this ball here. Watch this, the 10 pin's gonna be up, and all of a sudden, something falls from the top of the pins, caves the 10 out. Unexplainable. You'll take it. Inexplicable. <laughs> or inexplicable if you like. <laughs> Either way, I'll take it. Works on a spare, 22 pin lead. Fifth frame for Major Mika. There you go. There's help on the 10. Messenger finally finds its target on that shot. <laughs> Same half pocket looking for the messenger. Gets it. He's like, come on now. Get over there. All right. Red Angelo, perfect on the right lane, has failed to mark on the left lane. Title match. Fifth frame. Very big shot again for Angelo. Needs a rally. Wow. Boyd's a split again. Almost had disastrous 210. And the 10 stays up. This ball is just a fraction away from being another open frame. And right now, I think Brad Angelo is having trouble controlling his emotions. Bowling for the title for the first time ever in his career. Remember, it was a big theme right, in our meeting go. with him, Randy, last night about trying to keep everything in control on TV. It's a different, different atmosphere. There are interviews, there are lights, there's a big crowd, music, TV cameras everywhere. Much different than PBA competition all the way up through the round of eight. Two open frames on this left lane. He just switched balls and went to the stronger ball that he was using on the right lane to try to match up with the left lane. Completely lost on that left lane, Dave. Mm. Bad timing for Brad Angelo. Bidding for his first ever title. To lose the ball reaction this late. His peak of the background just patiently waits to grind out another tournament title. It could happen. Four pin. Spare converted by Angelo. Next week, the PBA along with Brad Angelo rolling on to Fountain Valley, California, the 61st U.S. Open, presented by Jackson U Attack Service. The action starts at 12.30 Eastern time. Note the start time, folks, different than our normal 1 o'clock Eastern time. So far, Patrick Healy Jr. defeating our Randy Peterson. Sorry, buddy. In the finals, TOC in Connecticut, Walter A. Williams Jr. won right here in Reno last week over Chris Barnes. Two majors remaining, including next week. Big, big shot there, Dave. That's a double, and that's a 33-pin lead. Mika not too unhappy to be here. Had he not made the show after having such a great showing at the ABC Masters, he would have gone home to help out with his... Wife Lana trying to put a purchase offer in on a new house near Ann Arbor. New house has a pool. The kids, of course, want that one if possible. Daughter Ida asking Dad, you got to keep winning so we can afford the house and the pool. It looks like he's doing just that. Keeps throwing shots like that. He can uh, add on to the garage. Just a perfect shot. About as straight as you could throw it up the 12th, 13th board. Right now, Brad Angelo in a whole lot of trouble. Best Brad can shoot is 215. Right now, Mika, 218 pace. That's high again. And Angelo's fortunes, oh. an opportunity for a first ever title are evaporating before his eyes. Hard to explain what's happened to Brad in between the two games that he's bowled. He bowled so great in his first match. He's just completely lost his ball reaction. Then he lost his mental focus. And unfortunately for Brad Angelo, he's just simply lost. Miko will gladly take advantage with a 44 pin lead in the championship match. Bidding for a fourth ever title and second of this season. Two pin for Brad there, that came in light. 
Goes back to the weaker ball, doesn't hook. Goes to the stronger ball, overhooks. Not much advice here for Brad. I'm not really sure what he needs to do. Either take the stronger ball, move deeper, take the weaker ball, move further right, and go straighter. Mika's strategy worked. He said, the guys have to beat me at what I do best, and that's going straight. He was fortunate not to be in any of the high scoring matches, only shooting 230 to get rid of Brian Kretzer. And right now, Mika's got this game and this championship in hand. Chance for 55 pin advantage. Bagger, 10 down the pit, and he knows it. Mika Corbin Emmy is already exempt thanks to winning in Windsor Locks, Connecticut. Van Angelo wants to get there. He certainly will if he continues on the point pace. A minimum of four from weekly qualifiers can make it. Eight from the tour trials as well. So there are chances if you don't win or on the top portion of the points list is still bowl next season, but everyone wants to assure themselves a spot now. Yeah, not pretty if you don't make that top 50 because uh, you don't want to have to go to the tour trials or try to bowl in those uh, pre-tournament qualifiers. And how good is great, this guy? Great. Is he unbelievable or what? You he's want great, to talk about great. player of the year honors, you have to look back at this tournament when Mika Koivuniemi won on his worst pattern, pattern B, and he won beating some of the best at what they do, and that's that in-game. Mika said, no way, I'm not falling for that. I'm going to stay out and do what I do best, and he won this tournament based on that. Just an unbelievable showing for Mika Koivuniemi. Mika said, I can't believe it. Well, believe it, Mika, another championship. Second of the season. And fourth of the year for Major Mika. Angelo had a lot of breakdowns in this championship match. Going right at the pins, Randy with a loft. He never altered his strategy. It's unbelievable what great shape this guy's in. All the games that he's bowled the last two weeks and fitting that that ball was perfect. Perfect in the last two weeks here in Reno for Mika Koivuniemi. Brad Andrew has said a little bit too late, unfortunately. Let me just add that next week at the U.S. Open, uh, Mika Koivuniemi did make the show there last year. Give me a latte on that one. <laughs> and bowls really, really good on tough stuff. And I guarantee you one thing, folks. Next week, the U.S. Open will be a very difficult condition. Latte, by the way, folks, is carrying latte, latte. and finish. <laughs> yeah. That's what Brad is joking around about. Mika uses a lot of his native language from Tampere, Finland, when he competes. Whatever language. It is thumbs up for Koi Brunemi. He has got a championship in the back. He did exactly what I said. He needed to move in with the hooking ball or move right with the straighter ball. He moved right with the straighter ball and threw three in a row. Easy to second guess now. Live and learn for Brad Angelo. Who wins his first ever TV match but cannot take his first ever title. Still, all the points he's racked up. He's in great shape for exempt status next year. Mika's got it wrapped up, that's for sure. Power bowling with that incredible loss. What a coming out year for this guy. Just amazing. From his 300 game in Windsor Locks, Connecticut, to all of these strikes that he threw on a pattern he doesn't like, Mika in serious contention for Player of the Year honors. Wow. That is the way you finish a match. Unbelievable. Speaking of not losing focus. The medallion he's wearing around his neck, he says it's helped him to stay focused, helped his mental game more than you could imagine. Gary! Unbelievable. Gary in English. Yeah! Yeah! 
Congratulations, really great. Point. He blows out Brad Angelo in the final. 258-181. Mika's second tournament title of the season. He is a winner in Reno, without question now. The front runner for player of the year. ESPN's exclusive coverage of the PBA Reno Open is brought to you by Miller High Life. Live simply, proudly, boldly, manly. This is the High Life. By the official candy bar of the PBA, Baby Ruth and Nestle, the real deal. And by Uniroyal, the official tire of the PBA Tour. Uniroyal tire is trusted by American families since 1892. Spectacular scenery in and around Lake Tahoe. And what a spectacular day for Mika Kronunemi. Here in Reno, Nevada, he's now the leader in points in the March of the World Championship. Brad Angelo goes down to the final. Randy Peterson joined now by Mika Kronunemi, the winner today. Thanks, Dave. Mika, last night... You told me that your strategy today was to make the other players beat you at what you do best, which was going straight and hard. How were you able to pull it off today? Uh, it was an unbelievable, unbelievable day, and I'm very happy that Depo Knight makes the bowling balls so I can go straight and hard and still compete with these big, slow hook guys, and this is unbelievable. Well, you really have to consider yourself the top of the player of the year race. Now you're the point leader. Where do you feel you are at that player of the year race uh, there's a lot of guys who've been bowling well this season. They had two big majors left, so I go by tournament by tournament. Well, Dave Ryan, Mika's got my vote. He has two wins this year and a perfect 300 game in winter locks. Back to you. Great season continues for Mika Koibunemi. Congratulations to him as he takes care of Brad Angelo in the final from Reno today. And he wins his fourth career championship, second of this season for Major Mika. The big fan is a winner at the National Bowling Stadium in Reno, Nevada today. Be sure to join us next week here on ESPN Fountain Valley, California. 61st U.S. Open, 1230 Eastern Time start for the Anaheim Convention Center, the finals. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Now for the entire crew, my partner Randy Peterson. It's Dave Ryan saying so long from Reno. What a day for Major Mika. He wins another title in Reno.